So guys, today I wanted to talk about Widow's Wine and the possibility that it may be a bit too overpowered and may not return in the next game. So why I think this is because Widow's Wine pretty much became a staple for everyone for their strategies. Apart from Juggernaut, a lot of people would go straight for that perk and would include it in their strategies. Now this is mitigated a little, it's $4,000 so it's pretty expensive. Black Ops 3 itself is an easy game so you may not even need the Widow's Wine protection. But also it wasn't a standard perk machine on all the maps. It was only like that on Shadows of Evil, Zetsubu no Shima and Revelations. Now the reason I brought up that it became a standard part of most people's strategy is because the same thing happened to PhD Flopper and was ultimately the reason why it didn't return. When PhD Flopper was introduced on Ascension and all the other DLCs after that included it, the sole strategy pretty much became getting Mustang and Sally by keeping your M1911 and then getting PhD Flopper. They'd become your oh shit guns. I remember people saying that they pretty much are wonder weapons in themselves because you just have to shoot at your feet and it also affected the ray gun as well because you could use that to shoot at your feet. So, you know, it complemented two extremely powerful weapons and instead of them nerfing those weapons, they just decided to take the perk out because the strategies for those four maps just basically getting Mustang and Sally. So they removed that for Black Ops 2, included it in some form in some of the maps. And then finally with Black Ops 3, it became a gobblegum. And that's why I'm a little worried that's the path that Widow's Wine will take. You did always hear people saying they spent like a million points, especially in Garod Krovi and Durizendrak, hitting the Dewand of his machine and trying to get Widow's Wine from it. I believe it's one of the rarest perks to get from Dewand of his, along with Juggernaut. But that shows that they know that it's like a wanted perk. We know Gobblegums are going to return in the next game. I think it's pretty obvious at this point. And it's a money maker for Activision. So I don't see them getting rid of Gobblegums. So there is always a chance that that could become a new Gobblegum. Now I think that's a bit extreme. I think realistically what they'll do is they'll include it on some maps and then just remove it entirely from other maps. I don't know if they can actually find a sweet spot with Wado's Wine. Uh, in terms of nerfing, I mean, can they nerf it realistically to the point where it's still useful, but it's not like the most wanted perk that everyone needs? Is there a way to nerf it without it being completely obsolete like Deadshot Daiquiri? So if they can't do that, I think they'll just limit it to certain maps. And to be honest, guys, I actually prefer that. But we also saw it pretty majorly for Black Ops 2. The new perks that were introduced were pretty much exclusive for their maps, but also some staples were removed. Mule Kick was most notably not in transit. Nuketown, of course, only kept to the four basic perks. Die Rise, we didn't have any stamina up. Mob of the Dead removed Crick Revive, but that was, of course, because of the afterlife mechanic. But it was also the first time we saw Deadshot return in Black Ops 2. Buried again removed Deadshot. And then, of course, Origins had every single perk except for Tombstone. Who's Who and Vulturate. So yeah guys, those are just the reasons why I think Widow's Wine could possibly be a bit too overpowered and why we might see some changes with it in the next game. Be that being made into a gobblegum, it's being nerfed, or it just being exclusive to certain maps and not just featuring in all maps. Anyway, what do you think of Widow's Wine? Do you think it's a bit too overpowered or do you think it's just right? Let me know and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers!